Good. Very good. Hmm. Okay, maybe let's pay homage to the Buddha. First. Namo Dasa Bhagavato Arato Sama Sambu Dasa Namo Dasa Bhagavato Arato Sama Sambu Dasa Namo Dasa Bhagavato Arato Sama Sambu Dasa Good. Many smiles. Bohut smita hasya. Very good. It's going to be a smiley department tomorrow. <laughs> Very good. <laughs> I thought this was a beautiful chant of the Ratana Sutta. Where did you learn this? Where, where is this? Uh, I mean, not the Ratana Sutta, but the chant is beautiful. I, I gave the music. Oh, <laughs> you, you made the music, uh, arrangements. Very well done. Very beautiful. Good. You trained them well. You <laughs> could feel the love pouring. It was very nice. Yes. Yes, well, yes, yes. Yes, 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 very good. So, tonight, last talk, last Dhamma Desana. A little bit about what is to come now. Coming back home, bringing the practice home. They need that only. Oh. They so okay. Yes. <laughs> yes. Yes. <laughs> Ah, things are going to be a little bit different, huh? And now you'll notice that your mind is not as calm most of the time. This is, huh? Uh, when we, the chat, chatting starts, then the mind starts also chatting in the mind. This chatting is only, it's only after a lot of things happen in the mind that we start to chat. Then, then when there, there's no chatting, <laughs> then there is a lot less activity in the mind. But that's okay. Huh? I mean, this is a retreat. That's why we come here and we do this. Because it gives us the supporting causes and conditions so that we can go deeper. We can see deep, deep in the path. And we can actually... It's like digging a well. You dig a well, you dig a well, you dig the earth. And then the more you dig, the more water comes up. And then you can use it when you go back home. You have a source you can come tap into. So that's very useful. And one of the things you'll notice is that, well, now you have to deal with your families, uh, all the distractions, Netflix, and... <laughs> and um, the noisy, wherever, whatever happens, wherever you live, uh, neighbors, uh, work, but that's okay. Our practice is not just a sitting practice. Uh, we go deeper when we sit, but the true nature of our practice is bhavana, uh, cultivating the mind, wholesome mental development. Gary Gala, 
बोलण्यातनं व्यक्त करत असतं त्यामुळे मन फार उठळ असतं प्रत्येक वेळी ते खूप आत 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 डीप जातच नाही त्याच्यामुळे जेव्हा आपण बोलणं थांबवतो तेव्हा मन असं शांत शांत होत खूप खोल खोल जात तर बरोबर आहे का घरी गेला असं शांत शांत आपल्याला मिळत नाही कारण ते रियालिटी आहे आपल्याला तर जावंच लागेल आणि रोजचं जीवन आपल्याला फेस करायचंच आहे पण आपण जेव्हा असं आहे आठ दहा दिवसासाठी येतो तेव्हा आपण मनाला असं खोल खोल जेव्हा घेऊन जातो तेव्हा आपण एक विहीर खोदल्यासारखं करायचं आहे म्हणजे विहीर खोदत आपण मनाला अगदी खूप खोद खोल खोदत जातो आणि मग पाणी लागतं बरोबर आहे की नाही जितकं खोल खडाल तितके पाणी लागेल बरोबर आहे ना तर आता थोडंसं खणलंय तर थोडं पाणी लागलं तर हेच पाणी आपल्याला पूर्ण म्हणजे देव तोपर्यंत आपलं दुसरा काय म्हणतात ना शिबिर होत नाही किंवा दुसरं आपण करत नाही तोपर्यंत हे हे पाणी आपल्याला पुरेसं असतं बरोबर आहे ना जेव्हा आपल्याला अजून करायचंय अजून मनाला दीप न्यायचं आहे तेव्हा अजून पुन्हा ते खोल जायचं आहे पुन्हा त्याचं पाणी वापरायचं आहे त्याच्यामुळे आपण जे ही एक भावना करतो त्याला वाढवत जायचं आहे आणि एका जागी वसूल करण्याची नाही आहे ही आपण जे शिकलो आहे ते रोजच्या आयुष्यात वापरण्यासारखं आहे म्हणजे असं नाही की मी आता मेडिटेशनला बसले की एक तास आता तरच माझं मेडिटेशन असं काही नाही आहे तर आपल्याला प्रत्येक चालता बोलता प्रत्येक गोष्ट करताना आपल्याला काय करता येण्यासारखं हे भावना आहे त्याच्यामुळे ती एका जागेवर बसल्यावरच होते असं काही नाही आहे तर आता एक लक्षात ठेवायचं की हे सगळं आपल्याला रोजच्या जीवनात कसं वापरायचं आहे हे आता समजलं पाहिजे Uh, there is a story which I really like. Uh, it's called The Man Who Planted Trees. I'm not sure if you're familiar with this story. Uh, it's actually from a French writer, uh, but the story was published in English first. And th it's the story of this old man called Elzea Bouvier, and he was uh, in the French Alps in the mountains. And he was living in a very deserted place uh, where um, there was no trees and there was no, everything was very dry and nothing grew really because of the sun was just too much and nothing could grow. And the story, I mean, it's a long story, but I, uh, if <laughs> I go to the core of it, um, this, this man was just living alone in this Uh, pretty much a, des a desert and he would only gather seeds of trees that uh, he found and he would sort them out and pick out the good ones the healthy ones and then he would go out with his sheep every day and he would simply just plant trees plant these little seeds he would find these little nooks and crevices where it would be a little more shady and a little bit more um, wet or moisture, a little bit of moisture. And he would find these places everywhere and he would just like put a little hole and put a seed and then move away and continue. And after many, many years, uh, he was not, he, he was, he was not really expecting anything he was not really wanting anything out of this just just the sheer goodness of doing it and after so many years uh, he had reforested an, a massive extent of uh, mountain and desert basically and made a new basically planted a forest but this didn't happen in the blink of an eye, trees take a long time to grow, especially in the desert. Uh, and sometimes they're, they're just not going to survive. You're going to plant them and then they're going to grow and then die. And he would come back and fill in what needed to be filled in. But he just took, he just took his time and he was happy doing this. He was not, you know, he was not wanting a forest tomorrow. <laughs> He was just planting now and he was just happy doing that because he knew that he was little by little 
planting some seeds that would become trees, perhaps. Uh, it's a French name, Elzear Bouvier. <laughs> <laughs> Okay. <laughs> yeah. Everybody thinks it is, but. And so I think it's a really beautiful parallel to our lives and our practice and how we perhaps should develop our perspective, how to see our practice in daily life. And to, to remember that this is, this is a slow process. The Buddha said in the, one of the suttas, he says, you know, it's like a carpenter or a fine wood worker who's like working with his chisels all day. And he, he's sculpting wood and he's making the mortises and all of this. And the, the woodworker doesn't look at his tools every day and see he's like, mm, this much has been worn out, worn out from my handle like today. Uh, or this much is remaining on my handle today. Or like every hour, he's not doing that. But after a few years, then the, he looks at his chisels and says, oh, a lot has been worn out. So this is the same thing with the mind. You can see a lot of these unwholesome states really wear out over the course of time. So it's not, it's not after a few days that we just look at the mind and think like, oh, you know, it's getting pretty good or, you know. So it's normal, like here we're on retreat and we go deep and that's that's the purpose of it and so we can actually have a lot of more wisdom to bring into our lives but then when we come back it won't be the same you know it's not as sustaining as here this is like a very lush forest of dhamma you know you have all the causes and conditions you don't have any disturbances you can just meditate eat walk meditate sleep walk meditate <laughs> So that, this is really good. But when you go home, it's like, okay, now you have a bag of seeds and a stick and you have some knowledge. <laughs> and you can start planting your own forest. And this is true for each of you. Each of you live in different families, different circles, different environments. And you're going to come home with your bag of seeds and your water and find 
The little places where you can plant those seeds in your life, with your family, with your friends, uh, these little seeds of kindness, of wholesome states, of generosity, or just even just listening to somebody, because now you can, because now you're calm, you're happy, your mind is happy, so you can actually listen to others. And so, coming home, this is a good way to look at it, a good way to see, well, little by little, and finding joy in planting these little, I like to call these uh, random acts of kindness. It's when, you know, people least expect it, or uh, a wonderful opportunity, and you'll start to see everything in your life as just an opportunity to do good, an opportunity to plant seeds of goodness, an opportunity to help somebody. And you'll notice that when you do that, you feel really good also inside for yourself. Good. Then you will notice that Hulu 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 All these little seeds they will start germinating and they'll start growing. 
And if you take pleasure in just planting seeds, even though it's a desert, you know, it's, it's harsh. It's not, it's not easy for, your, for you to maintain your practice in such conditions. It might take a little bit of time, but if you use everything that you've gained here and you start planting seeds in your life, the seeds of Dhamma, then you will see that if you're just happy doing that for a little bit and you find a lot of joy in this, these little acts, you will find that soon enough it will start to grow. And it will start to grow into little plants. And the little plants, they create shade and they protect the soil and they keep the moisture. And then little animals starts coming and then you have life that starts happening in this little underbrush and then it starts to grow a little bit more and as you bring this home as you keep planting you'll see it will start to protect you in return and so this is how the dhamma works when we give the dhamma we also get the dhamma so that's the beauty of dana it's not just dana or you should give you know just because you should give or because it's good to give it is but it's also exponentially uh, helping uh, i don't know in the mathematics how you would say <laughs> it's more than exponential it's like Yes. <laughs> yes. And the more you do it, the more it comes back to you. That's the beauty. That's why the Buddha said, if people knew just the way that I do, how beneficial giving is, they would never eat a meal, even a single meal without sharing it with somebody else. Or even take something without sharing it with somebody else. Even if it was their last bite of something. Because... Uh, he said, because of generosity, we're not stingy, we're giving. And it works in both ways. Both were, were, we don't need so much. We just, okay, okay, I can give that. Okay, I can give it to you. And we're making somebody else happy. So we're keeping ourselves in a really good place. <laughs> and this generosity in one way or another or another it always comes back to you more than a thousand fold and that is also in the suttas so when you give it comes back to you not just once more it's like a thousand fold more <laughs> आणि समजून घेण्याचा तर त्या नुसत्या लावायच्या नाहीये तर ते तुम्ही जेव्हा लावत जाल तर तुमच्या लक्षात येईल की त्या त्या मोठ्या होत आहेत बरोबर ना छोटे छोटे रोप येत आहेत आणि ती रोप नुसती जेव्हा मोठी होतात ना तर ती रोप नुसती रोप राहत नाही तर ते खालची जमीन म्हणजे त्याला सावली द्यायला लागतात मग त्या सावलीत इतर छोटे छोटे किडे मकोडे प्राणी येतात बरोबर ना म्हणजे जीव जीव त्याच्यात येतात म्हणजे काय थोडक्यात ते सगळं जिवंत होत बरोबर ना म्हणजे आपलं देणं जे असतं की नाही त्या आपण आपण एक बी लावलेली असते पण ती बी बिया लावलेले असतात तर त्याचा पुढचा जो भाग आहे तो मोठं होणं ते झाडं मोठे होणं हे ते ग्रो होतात तर तसंच आपण जेव्हा देतो किंवा लावतो किंवा शेअर करतो तेव्हा ते वाढत जातं आणि वाढत जाऊन मोठे होणार आणि धम्म असाच आहे आपण जितका धम्म देत राहणार तितका तो आपल्याला थाउजंड फोल्ड परत मिळतो बरोबर आहे की नाही कारण धम्माची ती बुद्धांनी पण सांगितली आहे धम्माची ती क्वालिटी आहे की तुम्ही म्हणजे तुम्ही जर बुद्ध म्हणाले की मी जसं मला जसं माहिती आहे की मी एखादी गोष्ट शेअर करतो तसं जर तुम्हाला कळलं त्याचा त्याच्या त्याचा जे मेरिट आहे किंवा त्याचं जे पुण्य आहे ते तुम्हाला किती पटीने मिळत आहे किंवा किती त्याचा फायदा आहे जेव्हा तुम्हाला कळलं ना तर एकही घास तुम्ही शेअर केल्याशिवाय खाणार नाही कारण इतकं त्याचं 
I like this threefold training. Oh, <laughs> there's sila samadhi panya, obviously, but dana sila bhavana is also really beautiful because so much of our lives, of our daily life, in the dhamma will be around dana, and that means give of your smile, give of your metta. We we do these retreats. We develop these beautiful states. And just, it's to be kind. <laughs> it's, to be, it's to be compassionate. It's to be helpful with somebody. It's also, it's also the purpose of what we're doing. I mean, there's not really any point in practicing loving kindness if you're going to be like, not loving and kind in your daily life. So <laughs> it's a direct application. And when you do this, remember, this is your dana practice. This is what you're giving. This is your gift to the world. And it's the most, the highest, the, the best gift that you can give is this steady presence of mind, the seven supports of awakening that you have cultivated within you. The smile. You're a happy person. You're a pleasant person to be around. It's just fun to be around you. It's just light. You know, there's no, there's no problems. There's no tension. There's no... Yeah, it's like something arises, even it's like, oh, yeah, sure, whatever, you know? And then, and then life becomes so light, it becomes so easy. And then you will see that when people see somebody like that, they want to be like that. <laughs> when you see someone that's happy, that's successful, and that's just beaming happiness, like, we all want to be like that. That's all we want to be. That's, we want to be successful. We want to be happy. We want to be loving and kind and loved and be able to love also. And so naturally, people, that's the, that's the natural attraction of, of wisdom, of panya, is that it just shines. It's just attractive. It's beautiful. Everybody wants it. When you see somebody like that, you want to be like that. And so when somebody sees you really happy, really smiling, and like not, not having so much problems in life, you know, you just, yeah, everything's good. Like the, yeah, of course, there's things that arise once in a while, and then, yeah, but you can six R it. And then you can just keep going and enjoy the metta with a smile. Majakara, chaliga, no problem. And so, remember this, even though you're, you're practicing bhavana, wholesome mental states, developing those within you, you, don't, you, we never keep mental states for ourselves. When we have anger, we give anger. It's, we don't keep it for ourselves. We never keep it for ourselves. When we have impatience, we give impatience. That's what we give to the world. That's our gift, our legacy. But when we cultivate the seven supports of awakening, 
when we cultivate metta, karuna, mudita, upeka, the clear mind, the satipatthanas, the six R's, right effort. This is such an amazing gift for the world and everybody around you. And you will notice that actually this is also helping you in return because the people will be interested, they will start to be kind, they will start smiling back at you, they will start doing nice things to you, <laughs> and they will start wondering, so where did you go for 10 days? <laughs> And then you can all have a good time next retreat. smile <laughs> So, in little more technical terms, what can we do at home now with the practice? How does it work? And where, where should you start? How should you practice? Because as you've seen, this meditation is quite dynamic, right? There's many things happening, many things that can go this way or that way. So now, where do we go? What do we do? And well, first, I just want to say, virtue is your protection. And this will maintain, basically, that is really the first uh, step of the four wise efforts, basically, the four right efforts, is, is part of it. And that's to protect yourself, your mind, your heart from unwholesome states from arising. And the virtue is what does that. 
virtue will make the boundaries where, okay, this is the limit. <laughs> you know, beyond this, I'm not going. Not killing, not stealing, not telling lies, not uh, doing any uh, sexual misbehavior, not drinking, because that's going to make sure that I have a clear mind and all of this can stay together as a whole. Now, when you uphold your virtue very well, your practice will be very well supported. It has the causes and conditions to be supported. So then, after that, you can start building on top of that. <laughs> Good. And like Venerable Metananda shared with us on the discourse, the Samadhi Sutta, the five points on this, this particular Samadhi that we're practicing, this, this kind of Samadhi, which is not one-pointed, because it's definitely saying it, that doesn't come from forcing or pushing or pulling, uh, it is very sensitive to virtue. So uh, if you were to really focus your mind on something, virtue is it's, it's helpful, but it's not that relevant. When we develop wholesome states like we've been doing, the metta and the joy, the smiling, and then the mind gets collected by that, it's a very different kind of meditation. And if we're going to break the virtues a lot, it's going to be nearly impossible to meditate like this. So this meditation is very virtue sensitive. <laughs> so keep that in mind. So that's why it is very important to uphold.
हा मेहता चांगली वहाँची असेल तर शील बलवान असणं किंवा शील शुद्ध असणं सगळ्यात महत्वाचं आहे शीलाचं शीलाचं काय म्हणतात त्याला संवर करावं शीलाला चांगलं सांभाळावं हे महत्वाचं आहे ओके सो आफ्टर यू डू दिस नाव where do we start in meditation well you start pretty much where you were what you were doing and i i i will repeat uh the the whole sequence so just that to make sure everybody goes home with the right understanding everybody is at different places so <clears throat> we've all everybody has taken their own route at some point during the retreat and i just want to wrap up in a straight line so that we can remember how how this practice works and so basically if you were with the spiritual friend <clears throat> you can start with the spiritual friend if the spiritual friend for you is uh is easy to bring up loving kindness just do that just do that and if uh that was where uh you stayed most of the retreat and well until this point then continue with that that's good if you need to go back and send love to yourself and then send send love to your uh, spiritual friend your kalyana mitra that's okay no problem all good sab theek hai and then if you were told uh, instructions on breaking down the barriers and um the uh, radiating to the directions then you start with that that's your meditation now so you start 5 minutes 5 minutes 5 minutes 5 minutes 5 minutes 5 minutes and then all all at once okay not pushing not forcing just allowing it to shine that's it with a smile <laughs> and of course the six hours remain the same throughout whether you start with yourself whether you're a spiritual friend whether you're with the directions now some of you are at this place where it's metta in all directions okay and at that point the metta has gone to the head so at some point it will go to the head again that's normal now you know it's normal and if you've gone deeper if you were radiating uh some kind of lighter joy or lighter calm or equanimity and it was radiant calm your object of meditation then you as you bring up the metta to the six directions and then you feel it um whenever it goes up and then radiating to all directions you simply allow it to calm down as you six are so this is a natural process it's it's pretty much happening on its own you don't you don't really have to force this it might take 10 minutes it might take it might take an hour and a half it might take even 2 hours it, it, the time frame doesn't really matter the what matters is that you know that this is the path and the reason why we keep telling people start with the metta even if it's going to be for a little while and if you even if you can access the quiet mind even at some point very quickly always start with the metta that will make sure that you start with the right foundation for this practice so it will clear the slate of your mind and sometimes when people have gone beyond radiant equanimity or radiant calm into the quiet mind where the mind is just very still very bliss blissful and quiet sometimes we if we don't start with the metta the mind tries to latch at this experience it tries tries to jump at it and kind of catch it because it it's used to it knows that state it kind of can remember it but the trick is you're not doing it properly so you're going to lose it and then you're going to wonder like what's going on what's wrong with my practice it's because you're not starting with the metta again with the joy the smiling the six hours and then it goes up and then that's very easy good ha ata bantani asa sangitle hai ki 
यापुढे प्रॅक्टिस कशी करायची तर इथे होता तर तुम्ही प्रत्येकाचे मार्ग वेगवेगळे होते आणि म्हणते तुम्हाला जसे गाईड करत होते प्रत्येकाने आपापला मार्ग घेतला होता आणि सगळे परत आता भक्तेच्या मार्गदर्शनाखाली करत होते पण आता तिथे घरी गेल्यावर तुम्हाला स्वतःच करायचं आहे बरोबर ना त्याच्यामुळे भंते आता पुन्हा सगळ्यांना पुन्हा एक रस्ता देणार आहे किंवा पुन्हा एकदा सांगणार आहे ओके काय सांगायचं आहे की सरळ कसं आता आपल्या मित्रा जी येतात शॉर्टकट कसं आहे किंवा जी करत होतो ते न भरकटता कसं सरळ करायचं बरोबर ना तर पहिले भंतेनी हे सांगितलंय की तुमची मेहता कुठेही असतो बरोबर आहे की नाही की तुम्ही कल्याण मित्राला मेहता देत आहेत ओके किंवा सहा दिशांना देत आहेत किंवा ती डोक्यामध्ये जाऊन ती पूर्ण सगळीकडे पसरते आहे बरोबर ना ती अगदी तुमचं मन वाईट माइंडमध्ये गेलेलं असेल कुठेही असेल तरी सुरुवात करताना घरी जेव्हा तुम्ही सुरुवात कराल तेव्हा पहिल्यांदा मेहतापासूनच करायचं आहे ओके सुरुवात मेहतापासूनच करायची आहे का असं करायचं आहे कारण जे आपल्या मनाला सवय असते बरोबर आहे ना जर तुम्ही फाउंडेशन क्लिअर केलं त्याला सगळा जो रस्ता एकदम पहिल्यापासून एकदम सिम्पल करून टाकला तर मनाला माहिती आहे कुठल्या कुठून कुठे जायचं हे आपल्या मनाला माहिती आहे पण अगदी इथूनच डायरेक्ट इकडे उभी मारली तर कदाचित भरकटण्याचा चान्सेस असतात बरं स त्यामुळे सुरुवातीला सुरुवात करताना मेहता करायची आहे आता वेळेचं वाहन फारसं होत नाही बरोबर ना ठेवायचं नसतं किंवा इतकेच तास करा झालं की मागच्या वेळेस पंधरा मिनिटात झाले आता अर्धा तास का लागला मागच्या वेळेस ते एक तासात झालं होतं आता का नाही होतं एक तासात तर तसा वेळ हे ठरवून काही होत नाही कारण इथे परिस्थिती वेगळी होती घरी परिस्थिती वेगळी असू शकते आपल्या मनातले जे काय म्हणतात ना ते डिस्ट्रॅक्शन भटकण्याचं जास्त असू शकतं त्याच्यामुळे ते आपण लक्षात ठेवून वेळ हे नाही करायची की आता तिथे होते ना माझं पाच मिनिटात असं व्हायचं आता का नाही होते असं काही होणार नाही कारण परिस्थिती बदलल्यावर मन मन कुठे भटकत आहे कसं भटकत आहे त्याला कसं आणायचं हे तुम्हाला प्रत्येक वेळी स्वतः ठरवायला लागणार आहे पण स करताना मात्र मेहतांनी सुरुवात करायची आहे एवढं तुम्ही लक्षात ठेवायचं आणि मग जिथे तुम्ही असाल ओके स्वतःला मेहता देत आहे किंवा कल्याण मित्राला देत आहे किंवा मग दिशांना देत आहे किंवा कुठल्या अजून वरच्या वाईट माईटमध्ये आहे ते मग एवढं शांत शांत आहे अगदी स्थिर आहे तिथे जात आहे तर स्टेप बाय स्टेप एक एक करतच जायचं आहे उद्या मागायच्या गाणी ओके आणि वेळ वेळ इथे इतकी लागली की तिथे आता असेच राहील कधी पंधरा मिनिटात पण होऊ शकतो मन असेल तर कधी एक दीड तास बसलं तरी त्या स्थितीत जाणार नाही पण त्याच्यासाठी असंच पाहिजे असं झालं होतं असंच पाहिजे असंच झालं पाहिजे असं कधी होणार नाही पण ओके किंवा तसंच झालं पाहिजे असंही हाव करायची नाही ओके तुम्हाला जसं सांगितलेलं आहे तसंच करत राहायचं गुड सो स्टार्टिंग फ्रॉम द मेता अँड देन लेट इट नॅचरली इव्हॉल्व्ह ॲज इट गोज डोंट ट्राय टू मेक इट समथिंग इट विल जस्ट गो देअर ऑन इट्स ओन ॲज यू सिक्स आर हां सो मन बतकला सिक्स आर करा ओके आय आय वॉज लिसनिंग I, I, I was learning also this retreat. Good. And then you will see, okay, so it doesn't really matter when it, where it's going to land. Or, and if it stops at a spe- specific station, that's okay. That's okay. Just stay there. Enjoy. And then, and then if it goes to quiet mind, then great. Stay in quiet mind. If it doesn't go to quiet mind, that's okay. No problem. So, after that, Uh, the amount of time that you're going to sit is also uh, good to look into. Uh, we usually, I mean, if, if you ask me how long you should sit, that's a, probably a bad idea. But because uh, I'm going to say seven to eight hours every day. But <laughs> I don't think you have that much time. <laughs> I think that's the sweet spot. Seven hours is really good. But um, I understand not everybody has that kind of time. So... Um, 
generally we say, well, of course, as much as you can, but two hours every day is really good for keeping the practice going. And uh, a lot of us are familiar with one hour in the morning and one hour in the evening, but if your practice has been such that you have been sitting for two hour sits here, it's better to have one two hour sit than two one hour sits. S because your mind will have enough time to go deep enough to experience some of the deeper stages and that will be more beneficial for you and you will feel like it's more beneficial. You, your mind will delight more in that than two smaller sits. Of course, if you were all already doing one hour sits, that's okay. You can do one hour in the morning, one hour in the evening, and that's fine. That no, there's no problem. You can do whatever you want. Usually two hours will be a good amount of time to really maintain and to basically to keep and maintain what you've acquired here, what you've uh, gained here, and that will maintain it. Good. And then for those of you who've practiced forgiveness uh, during this retreat or up until now, remember that forgiveness is probably one of the most useful tools you can have, especially in your daily life. <laughs> it's like a, it's like an emerg emergency button uh, 6R kind of thing. It's a, it's a big, it's a big 6R uh, tool, basically, which you can use you can use all the time, basically. You can find all the reasons in the world to forgive, and that will really help you let go and not accumulate all the stuff that people can bring to you. And you can just go like, ah, okay. <laughs> it's okay, I forgive you. It's okay, I forgive you for not understanding. I forgive you for, you know, just doing, doing what you're doing. Not, not being very helpful and uh, hurting me or whatever it is whatever it happens to be. And you'll see your, your life will become much more fluid, much more pleasant also. Not, not crisping, not you know, like taking it in, taking it personal, just like, okay, you're suffering too. Like, I forgive you. Like, having compassion, this is karuna also. Forgiveness is karuna. So, for those of you who have spent some time on forgiveness on this retreat, this is an amazing tool to bring home with you. So, just so you know. I think, for me, it's been one of the most useful, to be honest. Like, uh, yeah. So you can use it all the time for a lot of different situations. <laughs> Uh, 
आयुष्या खूब काम सग जन्म भर करना जन्म करना Good, good. All living beings want to be happy. Just remember that. Yes, our teacher Bhante Vimala Ramsi would say, "Don't be a Buddhist. Be the Buddha." <laughs> And. When we go home, sometimes uh, family members or friends might not really understand what this is all about that you've been doing here, or the Buddhist faith. But when they see you embodying the teaching of the Buddha, they are more likely to get curious and ask you about it. Or uh, at the very least, like Bhante has been saying, they'll want to be around you, and they'll just really appreciate. Uh, what you've been doing here. Uh, you can always remember you're one six hour away from mini nibbana. No matter how long you've been distracted, you're always just a six hour away from freedom. So, what you might find, what I think you will find, is that you know there's times during the day where you're just completely in the flow of whatever you're doing. And that might be necessary for your work. And then there's this moment where you wake up and you go, "Whoa, where have I been?" <laughs> and now you're here again. And that's a that's a beautiful moment. You should rejoice in that because that's the new habit that you're building to keep coming back again and again. Okay. <coughs> खुश करता ओके एंड सो आई थिंक दिस रैप्स अप द टेक्निकल पार्ट ऑफ हाउ टू मेडिटेट एट होम bringing home this practice now we've been spending 10 days and you know it's so many things happen and we have the daily interviews to make sure that everybody stays on track 
and now this is the template so this is what you want to be using and um, the suit I just want to end this retreat on uh, I mean I'll say a few and things at the end but um, uh, picking out from the jewel box here uh, again my community in Canada would roll their eyes but uh, by me saying that it's one of my favorite suttas, but, <laughs> but it is, and that's why I put it in the book. <laughs> uh, this is like a, a, this is kind of like my little jewel box uh, of suttas that I wanted to commit to memory. I'm not done. Uh, I'm, I'm working on it. It's gonna take me a, a while, but um, the on page one twenty three, one two three, ek do tin. <laughs> complicated <laughs> and so um, this is such a little jewel in the suttas uh, this is uh, the Chakkawati Sihanada uh, did I Sihanada? Yes, um, it's a it's a long discourse, but this is just an extract of it. Really going to to the core, to the best, and it's such a really good sutta to keep in mind in your life. And how do what we practice? What how we should see that? How we should see everything that we're doing here? Uh, how we should uh, develop our understanding. And I'll read the English because it's, uh, it's uh, my translation is offering a bit of a different understanding, I think. And then we have the Pali after with Dr. Yojana. So I think that'll be a good combination. Okay. So stay in your own fields, monks. Stay on. F oh, no, no, no. I'll just I'll just read it. Basically, yeah, I know it's in the reciting book, but it's because it's quite lengthy. If we're gonna recite it all, I was thinking um, I'm just basically gonna read it like if I were to uh, explain it. Yeah, I'm I'm gonna go through it, and then I w I was expecting or uh, thinking that Dr. Yojana would explain the Marathi with the Pali and like you've, you've been doing? Yes. Okay, 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 good. Stay in your own fields, monks. Stay on familiar grounds. Abiding in your own fields, abiding on familiar grounds. You will grow in vitality, you will grow in beauty, you will grow in happiness, and you will grow in wealth, you will grow in power. And what monks is vitality for monks and nuns? Here, monks, the mental collectedness obtained by way of desire and willful striving, one develops that road of power. The mental collectedness obtained by way of determination and willful striving, one develops this road to power. The mental collectedness obtained by way of mind and willful striving, one develops this road to power. The mental collectedness obtained by way of exploration and willful striving, one develops this road to power. Of course, in English and in Pali, the syntax is completely reversed. So here I've adapted my translations to fit like word for word the Pali. But yeah, so it turns out a little strange in English. <laughs> um, one in whom these four roads to power are developed and continually practiced may resolve to live for an eon or for the remainder of an eon. This is vitality for monks and nuns. Basically, what this means is like, of course, this is the Iddipadas, uh, the road to psychic powers or psychic abilities. But this is also uh, a way that we have to strengthen our practice. Basically, it's that it's it is part of the effort, the wiriya. Basically, when you look at the um, the formula for wiriya, this is also where you find chanda, because um, 
Wadia has this aspect of, yes, um, protecting from unwholesome states, uh, abandoning unwholesome states, cultivating wholesome ones, and then maintaining wholesome states. But it's not just that. It's doing this continuously, but desiring to continuously do this without stopping. It's a... Uh, I can't remember the Pali, but <laughs> the word Chanda is in there. And um, Chandang, Chandang Janati, Viryam Arabati, Viryam Arabati, Chittang Paganhati Padahati. Oh, wow, I remembered. Good. <laughs> Good. <laughs> so it's not only uh, doing these four different steps of protecting, letting go, arising, and then maintaining. It's also doing that constantly, putting our minds to it with chanda, with desire. And that's wholesome desire. And a lot of people say, you know, you, have, you can't want anything in Buddhism. Like, it's like, you can't, like desire is, is evil. But it's not true. There's chanda, and that is wholesome desire. And one, uh, one thing that happens is uh, when we cultivate these things, um, basically uh, desire for the Dhamma, desire for the practice with determination, applying our whole mind to it and exploring the Dhamma, then a lot of knowledge comes up. And this is how we, um, we also can... Uh, basically, we, we grow in vitality because when we practice this Dhamma, we let go of so much tension. And this is uh, also helping us uh, with vitality. This is helping us uh, with energy and also uh, letting go of unwholesome states. When we let go of craving, it's amazing the amount of energy mental energy that we gain because we realize how much our mind was actually um, yes attached but it takes a lot of energy to latch on and to cling to a lot to everything and when when this is getting looser we notice like wow this <laughs> is like I have so much more energy like things are so much easier because I'm not always like this I'm not always tensed at another level, we can like make determinations. Like I'm gonna like live. Like the Dalai Lama, he says he's gonna live till 120 or something. I can't remember. Yeah, he said I'm gonna I'm gonna I'm gonna die at 100 and something, 18 or something. Yeah. He's like, no, I just take the determination. <laughs> and that's a bit how that works. Like the Buddha said that he. If somebody asked him, he could live for the remainder of an eon, right? Um, and then Ananda didn't think of asking him to stay. <laughs> it's like he was kind of uh, bashed by the Sangha, but... <laughs> the eon here is literal? So there, the, the other interpretation of that is that like a, an eon could also mean a hundred years, like a full human life, lifespan. Yeah, because the Buddha passed at 80 or close to that and he said I could live up to to the remain for the remainder of an eon but I don't think that meant an actual eon a kappa so okay <laughs> तर <laughs> Sukhe 
भोगे नापी वड्डी सत्व आणि बले नापी वड्डी सत्व म्हणजे आयु वन्न सुख भोग आणि बल या पाच गोष्टी वाढतात जर आपण आपल्या गोचरामध्ये जे आपलं गोचर आहे त्या गोचरातच राहिलो तर आपल्या या पाच गोष्टी वाढतात तर मग पहिली तर आयु तर किंचित इतका वेळ दिसतो नो आयुष नाही म्हणजे आयु आयुष्य कशाला म्हणायचं आयु कशाला म्हणायचं तर त्याच्यामध्ये इद्धीपात दिलेले आहेत तर चार इद्धीपात दिलेले आहेत छंद समाधी पदान संखार समनागत इद्धीपादम भावेगी तर छंद म्हणजे काय मनाचा मनाचा कर म्हणजे इच्छा आणि ती होलसम आहे म्हणजे ती काय आहे कुसल कुसल मनाची छंद म्हणजे छंद म्हणजे मनाला वळवण कशाच्या दिशेने चांगल्या गोष्टीच्या दिशेने जेव्हा आपण मनाला वळवतो त्याला छंद समाधी प्रधान सुख संखार समना होता इथी पादक व्हावी की चार इथी पाद आहे त्यातला पहिला छंद आहे दुसरा वीर्य आहे वीर्य म्हणजे मनाला आपण त्याला काय करायचं वीर्य म्हणजे त्याला एनर्जी द्यायची त्याला उचलून धरायचं त्याला पावर द्यायची तर वीर्य समाधी प्रधान संखार समना होता इथी पादन पाहिजे तर दुसरा जे आहे ते आहे इथे हे विधी आहे तिसरं जे आहे चित्त चित्त म्हणजे काय मन जेव्हा जमा झालेलं असतं एकत्र झालेलं असतं तेव्हा मनाला ज्या दिशेने आपल्याला काम करायला घेऊन जायचं असतं त्या दिशेला आपण त्याला घेऊन जाऊ शकतो हे आपलं चित्त समाधी प्रधान संखार समना गत इथी पादन व्हावे की हे तिसरं इथी पाद आहे आणि चौथं इथी पाद आहे विमंसा विमंसा समाधी प्रधान संखार समना गता इथी पादन भावे की विमंसा म्हणजे चिकित्सा करणे बरोबर ना त्याला चिकित्सा करून बघणे तर आपण जेव्हा मन एकाग्र केलेलं आहे तर मन एकाग्र मनाला चिकित्सा वृत्तीने जेव्हा बघतो तेव्हा विमंसा इथी पाद वाढते अशा प्रकारे हे सो इमेस इमेसन चतुर्णन इथी पा पदान भावी तत्ता बघली तत्ता आणि आतंक मान कप्पम वा तिथेय कप्पम वासे मन वा इदम खोबित करे तिथून वाढस्ती तर त्यांनी सांगितलं आहे जर हे चार इथी पाद आपण वाढवले तर काय होतं की आपलं आयुष्य आहे ना हे कल्पापर्यंत वाढतं तर आता म्हणते मी जर सांगितलं एक कल्प म्हणजे अगदी ते मोठा कल्प नाही म्हणायचा आहे तर माणसाचं आयुष्य शंभर वर्षाचं आहे तर शंभर वर्षापर्यंत आपल्याला छानपणे जगता येतं जर आपण हे चार गोष्टी चार गोष्टी केल्या तर जसं बुद्धांना सांगितलं होतं की कल्पापर्यंत जगा म्हणजे ते ऐंशी वर्षाचे होते तर त्यांनी शंभर वर्ष जर असं म्हणत होते पण आनंदाने काय ऐकलं नाही वाटतं आणि असं म्हटलं तर मला नाही वाटत बुद्धा लागले असते तर ऐंशी म्हणजे कल्प म्हणजे शंभर वर्ष असं म्हणते जा तर हे जर आपण या चार गोष्टी केल्या कुठल्या छंद वीर्य चित्त आणि विमंसा हे रीती पाद केले तर आयुष्य एका कल्पा म्हणजे शंभर वर्ष सहज शांतपणे चांगल्या अवस्थेत जगता येत ओके सो दॅट वॉज द लॉंगेस्ट अँड आय थिंक द रेस्ट वॉल गो अल फास्टर And what monks is beauty for monks and nuns? Beauty. Here monks, a monk or nun is virtuous, living by the self-mastery of the Pati Mukha, endowed with skillful behavior, seeing danger in the slightest fault, undertaking the practice of the training rules. This monk is beauty for monks and nuns. And of course, when I say for monks and nuns, it's, it's, it's just because he's talking to monks and nuns. But It's for everybody. When, when you're virtuous, you're shining, you're, you're beautiful. It's, it's the, it, just, it just happens, you know. It, it just, um, it's something that, that happens through your own actions. Your own actions become beautiful, they become bright and attractive. They attract people also. They attract, uh, they attract goodness. And I just really love that the Buddha is, you know, get, offering us this perspective that our virtue is actually the beauty here. Because, of course, monks and nuns, we can't, you know, we can't have uh, fancy clothes and all this. And, you know, we have 
uh, rag robes and uh, well, not 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 often, but uh, we only have this. And uh, but our beauty is is our virtue, and this is the same for you. And what monks is happiness for monks and nuns? This is interesting. Here monks, letting go of sensory engagement, letting go of unwholesome mental states, assisted by thinking and imagining, with the blissful happiness born of letting go, one understands and abides in the first level of meditation. As thinking and imagining calm down, with inner tranquilization, the mind becoming unified, without thinking and imagination, with joy and happiness born of mental collectedness, one understands and dwells in the second level of meditation. As excited joy calms down, meditating with steady awareness, present and fully comprehending, experiencing happiness within one's body, a state which the awakened ones describe steady presence of mind. This is a pleasant abiding. One understands and abides in the third level of meditation. Unattached to pleasant sensations and unstirred by unpleasant ones, as mental excitement and heaviness settle, one's mind is balanced, purified by unmoving presence. One understands and abides in the fourth level of meditation. This, monks, is happiness for monks and nuns. And so this is more and more the well at which you will come to drink to find your happiness. Not in the world, not in the things that can just be taken away from you. That's not a wise investment of your happiness. And more and more you'll see. And you can just sit there on a cushion. It doesn't cost you anything. You just have to close your eyes and sit down for a couple of hours and just bliss out and be happy for two hours, non-stop, freebies, just joy, 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 coming out, pouring out of every pores of your being. And then that didn't cost you anything and it just required that you sit down for a little bit. And when you know this mental development, this training, you're the richest person in the world. Thank you. 
इतक भरभरून सुखे हे जगातले कुठलेच पैसे कुठलाच काय म्हणतात ना त्याला पैसे तुम्हाला तसा ते सुख देऊ शकत नाही कारण ते सगळं बाहेरच आहे आणि ते कोणी घेत खेचून घेऊ शकतं ज्याला आपण सुख म्हणतो पण हे तुमचं स्वतःच आहे त्याला कुणीही तुमच्याकडनं हिरावून घेऊ शकत नाही तो आनंद तो तुम्हाला सतत घ्यायचा आहे आणि हा कुठला आनंद तुम्ही घेतला सगळ्यांना माहिती आहे इतर मुक्कवे भिक्कू विविध कामे विविध कुसरे ही धोने सब तत्वम सब जाडम विवेक प्रीती सुखम पठम झान बरोबर आहे की म्हणजे तुमचा तुमचा सुख कुठला आहे पठम झानामधलं तृतीय झानामधलं द्वितीय झानामधलं बरोबर आहे की आणि हे सगळं हे सगळं आपण अगदी एक एक स्टेप बाय स्टेप सगळं केलेलं आहे त्याच्यामुळे सगळ्यांना झानामध्ये कुठल्या कुठल्या लेवल येतात आणि कुठे जातो आणि त्यातलं कसं सुख मिळतं हे सगळं माहिती आहे त्याच्यामुळे एकदम कोण विचारे पूर्ण सुख असणे ह्या सुखाचा अनुभव आपल्याला घेतलेला आहे आणि तेच सुख आपलं सगळ्यात मोठं सुख आहे या जगात हे सुख मिळालं की जगातला तुम्ही सगळ्यात श्रीमंत व्यक्ती म्हणतात कारण हे सुख असं कुठे काही करून मिळत मिळवता येत नाही त्यासाठी दोन तास आणि असे दहा दिवस बसावंच लागतं त्याशिवाय हे सुख मिळवताच येत नाही बरं ना त्यामुळे आपण जगातले सगळ्यात श्रीमंत व्यक्ती असतो ओके एंड वॉट मंक्स इज वेल्थ फॉर मंक्स एंड नन्स सो यू कॅन हँडल मनी हाऊ कॅन यू बी वेल्थी Here monks one meditates with a mind filled with love with a mind filled with compassion with a mind filled with joy with a mind filled with calm pervading one direction likewise a second likewise a third likewise a fourth so above below and around to all directions to all living beings in this boundless universe one meditates with a mind filled with calm vast expansive and unbounded radiant without a trace of anger or impatience this monks is wealth for a monk ani prashna hai ki kadhi kave bhi kuch nahi kare ki kono bhog asni bhog mhanje paisa okay well tar bante mhantat ki पैशाला हात लावायचा नसताना मग कुठल्या पैशाची गोष्ट करताय तर ती आहे मी ते कुठल्या आहे इतर भिकवे भिकू तर कुठली त्यांच्याकडे वेल्थ आहे आपल्याकडे वेल्थ कुठली आहे मेत्ता करुणा गुरिता आणि तर हे ही आपली भिकूंजी आहे ही आपली धन आहे आणि ते धन आपल्याला आपण कसं करतोय सगळ्या दिशेला वाटत जातो बरोबर ना जितक्या वाटा तितकं जसं आधी सांगितलं जितकं तुम्ही हे धन वाटा तितकं ते तुमच्याकडे परत येणार आणि हजारपटीने येणार नुसतं येणार हजारपटीने तुमच्या तुमच्याकडे हे धन पुन्हा पुन्हा येणार तुम्ही जितकं त्या सगळ्या दिशेला वाटत जाल तितकं ते तुम्हाला परत मिळत राहणार आहे आणि ते आहे नेता करुणा मुदिता आणि कुटुंबे हवा good so when you're in these four states you're in a brahma loka <laughs> that's as simple as this and how could you be more happy how could you have more i mean this is it this is what everybody's looking for love compassion joy calm these are the four states that brahma was known to be living in the four brahma viharas so when you live in these states you can't be more wealthy that's that's all everybody that has like all the wealth the money in the world in the end that's what they want <laughs> that's what they're after but we we get it from the source so we're pretty lucky here so we're the wealthiest persons तर जसे आपण ब्रह्मविहार करतो जर चारही ब्रह्मविहार करतोय तर आपण ब्रह्मलोकातच आहे ना आणि भारतीय जे आधीचे होते ते ब्रह्माची अहम ब्रह्मस्मी असं म्हणून मीच ब्रह्म आहे 
आणि ब्रह्मावर एक रूप होण्यासाठी इतकं करायचं आणि आपल्याला अगदी सहज कसं मिळवायचं ते रूपाने अगदी सांगितलंय आपण खूप नशीब वाण आहे जे आपल्याला इतक्या सोप्या पद्धतीने ते करायला मिळत आहे तर त्याच्यासारखं म्हणजे आपण जेव्हा ह्या चार ब्रह्मविहारामध्ये असून तर आपल्यासारखं श्रीमंत दुसरं कोण नसणार आहे And what monks is strength for a monk, for monks and nuns? Here monks, with the complete stilling of mental agitation, one is distractionless, without batakla. <laughs> unbinded mind, unbinded by discernment, knowing it here and now by direct experience, one lives and remains in it. This monk's is strength for a monk or nun. So, the state of the mind which you've attained through using the six R's and letting go of the asavas, letting go, relaxing, calming down, bringing up the wholesome states, this is also your strength. And when you go back home, you will notice. <laughs> तर बल हे आपलं आपण जे शिक्षा करून आपले जे अकुशल काढून टाकलेलं आहे आणि कुशल जमा केलेलं आहे सगळं आपलं काय आहे बल आहे आसवान खया अनासवन चेतन मुक्ती तिथे व धम्मे स्वयं अभिन्या सची तत्वा उपसंपज्य विनंती आपण आता कसं राहतोय की आसवांचा क्षय म्हणजे आपण जितका जितका शिक्षा केलेला आहे ना तितके तितके आपण आपले काय केलेले आहे अकुशल काढून टाकलेले आहे आणि कुशलांमध्ये राहिलेलो आहे आणि हेच आपलं बल आहे हेच आपली स्ट्रेंथ आहे आणि ही हे हे जेव्हा तुम्ही घरी जाल तेव्हा तुम्हाला तुमच्या लक्षात येईल की तुम्ही किती बलवान झालेला आहात तुम्हाला आता अकुशलांना किती अकुशल काढून टाकून तुम्ही किती कुशल जमा केलेले आहेत तुम्हाला घरी गेल्यावर लगेच लक्षात येईलच ओके मंग्स आय डू नॉट सी अ सिंगल पॉवर a single other power so hard to overcome as the power of Mara. The accumulation of wholesome states, monks, is the cause for merit to grow. Thus spoke the awakened one. Uplifted, the monks delighted and rejoiced in the awakened one's speech. And so here the Buddha ends by saying, just do good deeds don't stop <laughs> and you will get to nibbana you will overcome mara and its truths and you will be very happy looping back to the beginning stay in your own fields stay on familiar grounds the buddha actually in that sutta says these are the four satipatthanas so stay there stay there Six are the rest. Stay with the Brahma Viharas. Stay with the Satipatthanas. Don't, don't judge. Don't create opinions. Don't create tension outside of this. And all of this will grow. You will see. And then you will overcome. And keep doing this. Don't stop. Do good deeds. आपल्याला 
निबाण प्राप्त हो निबाण प्राप्त होता विकुन तुम्हें नुस्ता ऐकू ऐकू ना तो काम करा one last thing is uh, I like to remind us that uh, all of this has been made possible by uh, our utmost Kalyanamitta, the Buddha. And uh, he himself said that it is because of wise friendship, virtuous friendship, Kalyanamitta. I hope I'm pronouncing this right, that we can get all of this. And this is the whole of the path. Wise friendship is the whole of the path. And you, you're probably familiar with the sutta where Ananda comes to the Buddha and says, Bhante Bhagavan, this must be, this, surely this must be at least half of the holy life. He's a wise, wise company, wise friendship, Kalyanamitatta. The Buddha said, don't say that, Ananda. It's the whole of the spiritual life. Because it is because of wise friends, wise friendship, that we can get all of this by our wise association. Coming to a retreat like this, the people you choose to spend time with in your life, and for you especially, it's the Pali department. <laughs> because uh, that, and that's quite a wonderful uh, opportunity. It's quite a wonderful... Um, wonderful circumstances because you are all like a big family here and uh, you've chosen to be there and that's wonderful and uh, you're all Kalyanamittas basically you're all a family here <clears throat> but to remember that Kalyanamittatta is what brings you also the Dhamma the knowledge and so to be wise about the, per the people you surround yourself with to be wise um, also the Buddha said that you should always seek for someone uh, to associate with people that are uh, more advanced than you on the path so that you can learn and make a lot of progress and so uh, and without the Buddha well all of this wouldn't be possible so he's the first example and uh, a few notes I guess uh, before we, we, we wrap up this retreat um, maybe more on the technical side. Um, I know we, we had a lot of questions about uh, contacting or contact information and things like that. So I guess, um, how do I, shall I say that? Well, a lot of the information, all the suttas that I've been reading, of course, they're mainly in Pali and, and Marathi, but my own translations are all on a website called Heart Dhamma heartdhamma.love and uh, just to make sure <laughs> yes so yes so yes it's here very good I forgot it was there <laughs> it's also in the one of the first page and it's on the bookmark so this is where all the news from our community Heart Dhamma which also, uh, you know, there's many people all around. Uh, Hard Dhamma is simply something that I've, uh, a foundation or an organization that I founded in Canada when I was there. And uh, it basically acts as a container for all of my work and uh, news from our community and retreats, uh, sutta translations and books. So uh, there's the YouTube channel also with the same name, Hard Dhamma, where all the talks, all the retreats are there. Um, this, I think, will be the first real uh, full retreat with Marathi. Yes, yes, that's great. That's, that's wonderful. So I think that's going to be a good, uh, good thing for all the Marathi-speaking people. Good. Huh. I write a newsletter bi-weekly every couple of weeks to everybody in the community say what's going on what are the next retreats happening there's a new sutta translation every every two weeks and a new uh, a teaching basically uh, proposed and sometimes the uh, venerable helps me with creative ideas because <laughs> I don't know what I'm doing he knows a lot more than me and um, 
yeah, retreat opportunities, uh, pictures, and all that. It's all there. So you, if you are getting the newsletter, then you will at you will at least get, you know, uh, most of the things that you, you want to get. And then there's a, a link to join the Signal group on there. Uh, there's links for all of our everything <laughs> on, on that newsletter. Upcoming retreats. Hmm. Dr. Yojana and I will have to talk, but <laughs> uh, I'm planning to maybe, well, of course, uh, Venerable and I are going to Sri Lanka, bringing uh, Metananda to my forest monastery in Sri Lanka. I'm gonna spend some time there. Hopefully tour around some holy places. Uh, I'm gonna be staying there for three weeks. He's gonna be staying there for a few months. We're preparing him, gearing him up so that he doesn't lack of anything in the, in the jungle. He's going to go to my kuti in the jungle. And then um, I'm going to the U.S. in California for a retreat on Easter. It's been a, a long classic in the Damasuka tradition. But it's been going for 18 years, I think. This year is the 18th year. Uh, there's rumors about Australia as well, but that's a bit far. Yeah, there's lots of rumors going on. So, <laughs> um, I just want to say that it was a pleasure to have you all on retreat, and um, a real pleasure to see everybody start smiling more and more, and uh, majakara more and more, and become the beautiful, bright beings that you are right now. And not that you were not before, but now you're especially bright. Yes, I usually end the retreat with, okay. Oh, yes, 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 sorry. I'm just on a roll. <laughs> yes. technical <laughs> ที่เป็นตัวชั้นทางการศึกษาเพื่อการพัฒนาวันนี้อันนี้แต่เจ้าก็ใกล้เทคนิคดีเจ้าสั่งเสนอเสียงเพื่อที่ฮาร์ดท
मोठे पुण्यात जवळ किंवा मुंबई जवळ कुठेतरी घेण्याची इच्छा आहे आणि त्यांना कलिंग बॉम्ब जे आहे तिथे त्यांची कुटी बनली आहे त्यांना कुणीतरी दान केलेली आहे तर बनते तिकडे बहुतेक राहणार वर्षावास तिकडेच करायचा त्यांचा विचार आहे तर जेव्हा जेव्हा मुंबईत येतील तेव्हा ते आपल्याला जास्तीत जास्त लोकांपर्यंत धर्म हा पोचावा अशी त्यांची इच्छा आहे आणि त्याच्यासाठी त्यांनी भारत भारतात राहायचं ठरवलेलं आहे आणि त्याच्यामुळे आपल्याला त्याचा सारखा सारखा ऑपॉर्च्युनिटी Sitting in front of you. Oh, good. So I like to end every retreat by asking everyone, everybody here, for your forgiveness. So please forgive me if I have said or done anything that could have come across as hurtful or uh, inappropriate. It was. Definitely not meant, but these things happen, and um, please forgive me. And I wish I only have uh, all the love for everybody here. I hope everything goes well for you in the future, and I hope we get to see each other again. So, <laughs> very good. Okay. Yeah. Yes. Yes. या पोस्टमध्ये जर काही चुकून त्यांच्या रत्न असं काही बोललं गेलं असेल त्याच्याने होणारा काही उत्तर झालं असेल किंवा दुखलं असेल तर ते काही इंटेन्शन नव्हतं तर ते प्रत्येक वेळी येते क्षमा मागतात आणि त्यांना पुन्हा पुन्हा आपण भेटत राहू अशी त्यांनी इच्छा केलेली आहे आपण She wants to ask for forgiveness. Okay. <laughs> you have to practice. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. चलेगा <laughs> Yes. <laughs> and I yeah I think uh, I want to say the same thing probably that you're going to say but yeah please yeah I was just going to say thank you Dr. Yojana and the Claire all the department uh, all you brought in my day every time I saw your faces getting uh, brighter brighter younger and younger Uh, that's really for me seeing people's progress on this retreat even if you don't realize it as much when you're in it because things go up and down but then 
looking back at the end of a retreat and just seeing these really smiley, uh, beautiful faces. It's, it's just a treat. And then obviously just everything that you've been doing for us the past 10 days, from our little alms round routine, which is just such a wonderful uh, occasion with, with everyone there offering the food. I've never been a part of that before, and it's been very humbling for me. <clears throat> and I'm very grateful for all the people who have been coming and helping their cookies and just all the little, the little things. Juice has uh, been so well taken care of here. I feel uh, great, very grateful for you all. And then uh, a special thanks to Bhante Nanda for taking me under his wing. Uh, and still being able to fly both both wings, <laughs> and uh, you know I'm still learning, so uh, I apologize if I've uh, offended anybody. Um, uh, please forgive me as well, and uh, so we can all forgive each other. <laughs> and yes, uh, just very grateful to be a part of this. Anyone? मला <laughs> 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 Good. Yes. I, I think uh, I just want to make a special thanks to Dr. Yojana. <laughs> Dr. Yojana Thai. Yes. I mean, uh, I know what it uh, takes to uh, organize a retreat and to, uh, I mean, I can't even imagine running a department. <laughs> but uh, it's so beautiful to see. And uh, uh, what, what, a, what a beautiful group of people and so many merits. Uh, 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 yes, yes. So many merits. This is what ha happened. So many smiles now. Happy department. Yes, yes, yes. So much love and care from from her for for everybody. So I think uh, it's it's quite wonderful to see. So I think you everybody is in the, in good hands. <laughs> Very good. And I like to um, I like to. Uh, and the retreat on a uh, short 10, 15 minute metta meditation. Okay, relaxing your whole body, relaxing, relaxing. Letting go of everything that has been talked about letting go of any currents in your mind, allowing the river of your experience to just wash through, to flow through. Simply relax, relax, and smile.
looking back now that the 10 day retreat is coming to a close feeling so much gratitude, so much happiness for everything that happened during these past 10 days even challenges turning into gold even hard times being transformed into joy and letting go Just perhaps even repeating, thank you, thank you, thank you. Dhanyawad, Dhanyawad, Dhanyawad. Having had such precious opportunity and going home with such wealth, joy and happiness, calm. And slowly you can tune in, drop down into the feeling of metta, ignite the feeling of metta. Feeling coursing through your whole body, suffusing your whole body. And noticing as you relax more and more into this pure metta, oozing out of every pores of your skin, going beyond your body and shining outwards. touching everything going through everything the walls, the trees the sky, the earth the whole universe imbued with the light of your love
feeling so much love for all living beings. Knowing that all living beings just want to be happy, just want to be loved. May all living beings take part in this. May all living beings feel this love that I feel, this happiness. Perhaps for a few moments you can come down from the heavens and come down from this beautiful Brahma Loka and think of your whole family. and given them your love. All the love that you have unearthed on this retreat. to your friends,
to everybody that you know in your life that surrounds you. And now, to everybody at the Poly Department, to that whole building and all the people in it, May all of them be happy, be loved, be well, be successful. to everybody that served on this retreat, all the people that supported this retreat, who made it happen, the Sonawane family, everybody. From far or near. to Venerable Metananda setting all of your love <clears throat> for his kind and loving presence on this retreat assisting and helping everyone May he be well, may he be happy, may he be healthy and protected. And now to Dr. Yojana.
May she be happy. May she be well. May she be protected, healthy. May she live long and enjoy a good life. And finally, to my dearly beloved teacher, Bhante Vimala Ramasi, who brought us this amazing teaching. May he be well. May he be happy. May he be healthy. May you all be well and happy, healthy. May you all have a good life. And slowly coming back to your senses, welcoming the room. Getting ready for group picture. <laughs>